Hello again everyone and welcome back to episode 3 of the pre-achievement series. This week we'll be covering PvP, Dungeons and Raids. I did say we'd also go through professions at the end of the last episode, but while doing research for this one, realised that the Dungeons and Raids section was going to take a significant amount of time, which I'm sure you'll all see soon why. But in the name of content and sanity pacing, that'll go into next episode alongside the final tab we can look at properly, Reputations. With that bit of admin out of the way however, let's start today's achievement roundup with player vs player. Now, interestingly, in this tab there's an absolute plethora of achievements for arenas and for every type of battleground. The only problem for us though is that in the scope of this series, there isn't actually a lot in there that can be proven or we know that we can actually get before the pre-patch. For instance, in Warsong Gulch you have the Iron Man achievement, where you have to carry and capture the flag three times without dying. How do you prove that outside of recording all your battlegrounds and then sending Blizzard a zip folder with all the evidence that you did all the PvP achievements already? So, on the assumption you're not crazy, the first achievement we know you can track is an honourable kill. This is a nice tiered achievement which starts with only getting one kill and then rapidly ramps up to 100, 500, 1000, 5000 and basically doubling after that all the way up to 50,000 and beyond. Thankfully, you can track your progress here by just the PvP tab, with the lifetime honourable kills at the top being your marker. No real advice here, just do some BGs every BG weekend and you'll make solid progress here. Next is the Gurubashi Arena Master and Grandmaster. The former, you need to loot the Gurubashi Arena chest once, and for the latter, you need to do it again another 11 times, or 12 total for the Arena Grandmaster trinket. It'll be the trinket, that's the proof you've done this, and should be relatively easy to try and do in TBC, as most people there would be for twinking. So, grab a mate, head down, grab a couple of spawns, they start at midnight each day and then continue every three hours, so the next one would be 3am, 6am and so on and so forth. Beyond this, there is the PvP amount achievement, which requires you to simply to get one of the mounts from the PvP vendor. This will cost you the 30 Warsong Gulch, 30 Arathi, and 30 Alteric Valley Marks, so you just do some BGs for it. Although, speaking of mounts, another achievement is purely around getting your Alteric Valley Faction Mount, so your Frostwolf Hower or your Stormpike Ram. And then lastly, to cover the PvP tab, it's the rep achievements. You get one from each the Alteric Valley, Arathi Basin, and Warsong Gulch reps, and then a separate meta achievement for getting all three. This meta achievement does also give you the title Conqueror, which is pretty badass. But yeah, that's literally all the PvP achievements that you can do and prove you've done in Classic. Despite there being a long list for everything, that's all you can do. I'll make sure to further note as proof of concept for all the arena nuts that all the achievements themselves are for level 80 stuff. I'm pretty sure you'd get feats of strengths for getting highly ranked in TBC. So no achievement points, but something really cool when someone inspects you and goes, damn, you know how to PvP. So now we get onto the Dungeons and Raids section, where I'll be doing something a little more in-depth than just point a finger at all the dungeons in Classic and TBC and say, do them. Mainly because just completing them isn't enough. No, you need proof of your triumphs. And the easiest way I mentioned before was just to have a piece of loot on you from the end boss. But with 32 bosses in Classic and 41 in TBC between Normal and Heroics, it's hard to justify having 73 bank slots dedicated to just random pieces of loot. So then, what, what do you do? Well, the other way is through quests. So, we'll go through from the first dungeon at level 8 all the way to the biggest level 70 raids and let you know if it's possible to save a bank slot on the achievement. And so we start with Ragefire Chasm, where you have to kill Taragaman the Hungerer and the Horde, have the Slaying the Beast quest from Nehru Fireblade just outside the instance, but obviously the Alliance don't have a quest to go and kill him. To make up for that, in the Dead Mines you have to kill Van Cleef, and the Alliance can either use the Unsettled Letter from Edwin himself, or the end of the Defias Brotherhood chain, in the Wailing Caverns, you have to kill Mutinous, and the Glowing Shard quest that drops off of him for both factions will provide the evidence you need for that kill. Then onto the Shadowfang Keep where Aragal must die, which, coincidentally, is the quest name started by Dalinar Dawnweaver in the Sepulchre for the Horde. The Alliance need to get some gear off of him. And to travel back across the world in the Black Fathom Depths, Akamai doesn't actually have any quest associated with him for either faction. In the storm with the Sockade, you have to defeat Basil Thread. He is the namesake of his own kill quest, started from the unsent letter from Edwin Van Cleef. 
This means it's Alliance only, and Horde pretty much can't do this achievement because he doesn't drop anything unique, which is surprisingly lame. Now in Nomagan, you have to kill Mechania Thermaplug, and both have, factions have a quest to kill him. The Alliance get it from High King Mechatork himself in Tinkertown, whereas the Horde need to talk to Sovik, in the engineering supplies guy in the Valley of Honor, and follow a short and sweet chain to Rig Wars, which will be your proof of kill. And into the Razorfang Cruel, Shalgar Razor Flank. The Horde have two options for Shalgar. The first is the quest A Vengeful Fate, which is started by Old Stone Spire and Thunderbluff, or the Unholy Alliance quest, started by a small scroll that you'll find on her body. The Alliance get the quest The Crone of the Cruel, which starts from Lone Brow's journal. You'll find Mr. Lone Brow close to the bottom of the Great Lift, having failed the elevator boss. I'll also make note that this is a clickable near the body, which does have a three minute respawn timer. So don't get discouraged if it's not immediately there, you just got a bit unlucky with the timing. Then into the Scarlet Monastery, where you have to kill Blood Nature Thalanos, Arcanus Doan, Herod, Mograin, and White Mane. Five in total. And this is actually a really annoying one, as Blood Mage and Doan aren't in either faction's bit of the quest for the monastery. Into the monastery from Barry Marthras in Undercity, and In the Name of the Light, which is a chain which starts from a Scarlet Zealot and Nigel's Point in Desolus of all places. Only requires you to kill Houndmaster Loxie, and not Arcanus Doan for reasons, and then more reasonably, Herod, Mograine, and Whitemane. So for this achievement's ease, you'll need to complete those quests and then have a trophy from the mages of the graveyard and the library. Now into Alderman, Arcadus. And for this one, both factions are looking for the Shattered Necklace from any of the mobs in and around Alderman. This will send you on a quest chain, which will end requiring you to kill him. And alternatively, and more unpredictably, the platinum discs from the door behind Arcadius should also count. But because it only requires for him to be dead and doesn't directly involve killing him, it's hard to tell. Next, Razor Fen Downs, requiring you to kill Aminar the Coldbringer. And the next set of quests, both the Alliance and Horde are the bringing something home, with the Alliance quest called Bring the Light from Archbishop Benedictus in Stormwind's Cathedral, and the Horde quest is Bring the End from Andrew Brunel in the inner section of Undercity's Magic Quarter. From there we go to Moradin, which is that huge, huge dungeon, and you'd sort of expect this one to have a kill multiple mobs, but no, you just need Princess Theradras. And for the princess's proof of it, kill, both the Alliance and the Horde need to get a quest called Corruption of Earth and Seed. The Alliance get this from Keeper Maradris in Nigel's Point, and the Horde get it from Selendra, south of Shadowprey Village. Zulfarak, Chief Uzok Sandscale, has no quest for his life. Quickly then onto the Sunken Temple, where the Shade of Aranicus will drop his own shard, which gives a quest. So nice and easy proving you've killed him. Then, Blackrock Depths with Emperor Dagran. For the Emperor's good life, the Alliance need to start a chain from Kahan Mighthammer in the Blackrock Depths themselves, and then go back to talk to Magni, then come back to kill Dagran. Whereas the Horde's quest chain starts with Commander Gorshak, which you get from Galmav the Marksman in the Tower in Kargath. Then heading straight up from BRD, we have Lower Blackrock Spire, where you need to kill Overlord Rumtharak. For his life, we, as the Horde, you need to simply complete the Warlord's Command that you get from Warlord Gortooth in Kargath. And for the Alliance, there's a short chain starting with a goblin named Bijou, roughly just after the two wood bridges near the start of LBRS. Then going a little bit higher than the Lower Blackrock Spire, we have Upper Blackrock Spire, where you have to kill General Dracosath, and for both factions, all you need to do is follow the long, long Anixia achievement quest, and you'll get him down soon enough. For the King of Dire Maul achievement, which requires you to kill the last boss and effectively each wing of Dire Maul, Alzin, Imolthar, and King Gordok, and unfortunately there's no quest to kill either Alzin or Gordok's life directly, although with the same logic as the Platinum Discs, if you were to complete the unfinished Gordok business from Captain Core Crush when you become the King of the Ogres after Gordok's death, that may give you the achievement, but considering you could get that quest in those nice and pre-cleared DMN buff runs, it's unlikely. Thankfully, Imolthar does have a quest called The Madness Within from a Shendralar Ancient in Diamore East itself. Then for the spooky dungeons, first the Scholomance, where you have to kill both Raz Frostwhisper and Gandling. There's no quest for Gandling, however, both fractions get to go down the quest chain to kill Raz, starting with 
the human Raz Frost Whisper from Magistrate Marduk, just outside of Scholomance itself. And then the final classic dungeon is Stratholm, where you need to kill both Balnazar and Rivendare. And this is actually pretty easy to prove, as both factions complete the quest The Truth Comes Crashing Down from Duke Nicholas Zverenhoff for Balnazar, and then the next quest in the chain called Above and Beyond for Rivendare's Head. And now the classic raids, which will be a bit of a lightning round. For Molten Core, no evidence for Ragnaros, go get some cool loot from him. Blackwing Lair, Nefarian, his head. Sulgarub, Hakar, his heart. Ruins of Anchorage, Osirin, his head. Temple of Anchorage, Cthun, his eye. And if you're wondering where Nixius Lair and Naxxaramis are, they're both level 80 raids in Wrath of the itself. So if you have either Kel'Thuzar's Flactory quest done or Nixius head complete, You'll get a feat of strength, more than likely, but you won't get any actual achievement points. So, now that we've finished with Classic, it's time to go through the Dark Portal and into TPC, where the Evidence Gathering mission is actually a hell of a lot easier, as everything is far more concentrated and the quests are very easy to find, so there's no more heading to Desolus for a quest in the Trisful Clades. So, instead of going by level, I'll be going by Dungeon Hub. And naturally, we'll start with the Hellfire Citadel. First with Hellfire Ramparts, where you have to kill Omor, the big demon guy. And this is actually pretty easy to get. The quest weakened the Ramparts from either Stoneguard Stockholm for the Horde and Lieutenant Chadwick for the Alliance, which both come after the short quest chain involving you coming through the Dark Portal and eventually talking to the guy next to the Garavans, just outside Thralmar or on a hold. Then onto the Blood Furnace, where you have to kill Keladan at the very bottom. And there's actually no quest to kill this guy. The main quest for both faction in the Blood Furnace is requiring you to get the Fell Orc Blood and the Rod from the Maker. But the Shattered Halls, the final dungeon in Hellfire Citadel, requires you to kill Warchief Kargath, either the Will of the Warchief from Nazgrel for the Horde, or Turning the Tide from Danith Trollbaden for the Alliance. Both acquirable at level 67 and doesn't require any quest chain prior. Then, to head west into Zangamarsh, we go to the Coilfang Reservoir. First, with the Slave Pens, you need to kill Quagmarin, and there's no actual quest for his life. In the Underbog, you have the Black Stalker, which requires the quest Stalk the Stalker, which you get from the Sporlings in Sporgar once you've reached neutral with them. Through some short quest chains in the southwestern past of Zangamarsh in the Spawning Glens. And then finally, you have the Steam Vaults, where you have to kill Warlord Calathresh. And you get the quest The Warlord's Hideout from Watcher Zhang next to the Sunning Stone just outside in the Coilfang Reservoir itself to have his head. With this done, we go down to Akundun with first the Mana Tombs where you have to kill Nexus Prince Shafar. The quest undercutting the competition is literally outside the instance and pretty easy to do. The Orkanai Crypts where you have to kill Exarch Maladar. Everything Alright will be the quest from Grandfather Aldramus just outside the instance portal as well. So you can see what I mean by getting quests here is a lot easier. And speaking of, Sethicals, requiring you to kill Talon King Icus, requires you to do the quest Herox Legacy, which is right out front of the instance. And then, not right out front of the instance, in the last Arkandun dungeon, in Shadow Labyrinths, requiring you to kill Murmur, the Into the Heart of the Labyrinth quest, requires you to read the Book of Blood in the Shadow Labyrinth itself, once you've killed the third boss. Then to head far north into the floating citadels in the Netherstorm. You have the Mechanar requiring you to kill Pantalon the Calculator, which requires you to just complete the Architrez key quest chain. The Botanica requiring you to destroy the Warp Splinter for the same Architrez key quest line. And then once you've completed those steps, you talk to Adal in Shatrath City, who will give you the final quest to kill Arbringer Skiris in the Architrez. And to just give you the little heads up, you start this quest chain from the Ethereal next to the Inn in Area 52 in the Netherstorm itself. And then the final two TBC dungeons require us to go back to Azeroth to the Caverns of Time. First, the Escape from Dernhold Keep, requiring you to kill the Epoch Hunter, and then opening the Dark Portal, which requires you to kill Ionis. And you can get both of these quests just by following the Keepers of Time quest chain, which you start by having to do the escort quest in the Caverns of Time itself. Pretty self-explanatory, thankfully. Except one last instance I did almost forget about, because it comes out in Phase 5, is the Magister's Terrace, requiring you to kill Kalthus, which you basically just follow the quest line in the Isle of Queldenas, and it'll eventually get you to go and kill him. And the quest chain to unlock the heroic version of Magister's Terrace requires you to kill Kalthus as well. And that's the normals. And thankfully, to go through all of those dungeons on heroic mode, which, as I mentioned prior, have their own 
separate achievement for them. You pretty much just need to be on top of your daily TBC kill quest, which you should be doing anyway, because Badges of Justice just keep appreciating in value. So by the end of TBC, if you've kept up with them, you'll get all of these heroic achievements. And it does also include Heroic Magister's Terrace, as that gets an update later on. And now, onto the TBC raids. And this will be another quick lightning round, because it all is pretty self-explanatory, thankfully. First is Karazhan the Prince, which requires you to just follow the Violet Eye quest chain out front, which you will have to inevitably do for the Nightbane attunement anyway. You have Gruul's Lair, which is required for the SSC attunement quest. Magtheridon's Lair, Magtheridon, gives his head. Serpent Shine Cavern requiring you to kill Lady Varsh and Tempest Keep requiring you to kill Kael'thas are both required for the Battle of Mount Hyjal attunement quest which you get and can get now in phase 1 of TBC by a NPC walking around the caverns of time. For the Battle of Mount Hyjal, Archimon, nothing for him. Black Temple, Illidan, the fall of the betrayer at the end of the Black Temple attunement quest is for his life. In Zulaman, Zul'jin, Warlord of the Amani is from a NPC just outside of ZA. And then finally, with the Sunwell Plateau, kill Jaden. There's no quest for him and he doesn't drop anything, so rip. And so that's it. Well done, we've made it to the end. And this is a great amount of achievements that you can get. And hopefully just by doing all of these quests, there aren't actually that many pieces of loot that you're just going to have to hold on to as proof that you've actually completed them. And so thank you all again for joining me for this episode. Next episode we'll be focusing on professions and reputations and should be the final big episode in this series. I'll do then a wrap up and give you a conclusion on how many points I think you can actually achieve prior to Wrath of the Lich King. And then, well, I've got a few ideas of what to record and do after that. For now though, thank you again for your time. If you liked what you've seen, please subscribe and like below. And I hope to see you next time. Cheers.